polar bears. Majestic. Ferocious. And their babies are so cute. It's no wonder why polar bears have captured our hearts and imaginations. People flock from all over the world to see them at zoos. Some even travel to the Arctic to go on polar bear tours. Advertisers know just how much we love polar bears and have turned them into salesmen. I mean, sales bears. Recently, I read a children's book called The Last Polar Bear. It's a story about Tigluk, a boy and his grandmother who are both desperate to save a young polar bear cub who lost its mother. They believe that cub may be the last of its kind due to the rapidly changing Arctic environment. So sad. The story made me wonder two things. First, how many polar bears are there? And secondly, will we see the last polar bear in our lifetimes? It turns out it's not so easy to find out exactly how many polar bears there are. After all, polar bears don't fill out the census. Since 1968, a group of scientists called the Polar Bear Specialist Group at the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, or IUCN for short, risk life and limb studying, tracking, and tagging polar bears in the wild. Helicopters and keen eyesight to pick out polar bears camouflage in the white arctic snow are some of their best tools. Their job is really hard because polar bears not only live in some of the harshest environments on Earth, but also, the territory of polar bears is huge. It is divided into many different regions where subpopulations of polar bears live from Greenland, Scandinavia, Russia, all the way around the globe to Alaska and Canada. If polar bears had their own country, they would occupy an area about the size of the United States. Gee, I wonder what the polar bear flag would look like. Scientists rely on two main ways to count polar bears. The first is called mark and recapture. Yeah. Scientists will fly around in helicopters searching for polar bears. When they find one, they sedate it and give it a checkup. After gathering data on polar bear health, they put on a tag, GPS, or camera on the polar bear and release it. This method is great because we get to know more about polar bear fat stores and other vital stats, but we also get to see life from a polar bear's point of view with the polar bear cameras. The United States Geological Survey has polar bear cam footage from 2014 and 2016. It's really cool and you should check it out. Now, let's get back to marking recapture. Sometime later, scientists go back out in their helicopters and capture polar bears again in the same area to count how many of the same polar bears they recapture. This graphic helps explain how mark and recapture works. If scientists capture and mark 10 polar bears and release them back into the wild, and then they come back the next year and recapture only one from last year and nine new polar bears, they figure the other nine marked polar bears each have nine friends and there are about a hundred polar bears in that area. That system works because scientists assume they have an equal chance of capturing each individual polar bear. Mark and recapture works really well in areas where helicopters can easily land to get scientists up close and personal with bears. But what about areas like sea ice where it's not safe to land a helicopter? For those areas, Scientists stay in their helicopters and use their trusty pair of binoculars to count the polar bears they can see from the air. By flying in straight lines, scientists can crisscross the map. 
While they can't reasonably fly over every area to see every bear, they can estimate the number of polar bears in areas they didn't visit by using data from the areas they flew over. Combining those two methods, scientists at the IUCN have estimated in 2019 that there are about 22,000 to 31,000 polar bears in the wild. Hooray! So that's the answer, right? Well, not quite. That range is just an estimate and has some problems. For example, the IUCN does not have enough information to venture a guess in four of the 19 states in the polar bear nation, covering eastern Greenland, most of Russia, and the Arctic Basin regions. While it may not be possible to know for sure the exact number of polar bears without a true census, 22,000 to 31,000 polar bears may be the best guess we've got. But is that a good number, or should we be concerned for our frosty friends? Fortunately, scientists at the IUCN have been studying polar bear populations for over 50 years, and we should be able to see if polar bear population is growing or shrinking over that time. If only it was that simple. You see, scientists have been learning not just about polar bears, but also how to improve their methods of tracking polar bear populations. As they learn more, they change their methods, and that leads to a big problem. We can't simply compare the data each year on a graph from the IUCN and look at the trends to see if polar bear populations are going up or down. Fortunately, the IUCN has done its best to account for the different ways they have counted polar bear populations over time. This graphic from the World Wildlife Foundation shows the size of polar bear populations by region and where polar bear populations have been growing, shrinking, or staying the same across the states of the polar bear nation. Polar bear numbers are trending up in two regions, stable in five, and going down in four. Unfortunately, the picture is not complete because we don't have any information for eight states in polar bear nation. Some will see that data and conclude polar bears are in trouble. Others will say no big deal because the stable areas contain the majority of polar bears. It's clearly open for interpretation whether polar bear populations are truly decreasing, increasing, or stable right now. What's not really open to interpretation is that human-caused global warming has had an impact on the sea ice that polar bears call home. While that statement is sure to stir controversy in the comments, 97% of scientists agree with that statement, and it represents the current consensus no matter what your crazy uncle says. Although Arctic sea ice has been receding, limiting polar bear habitat, it's not entirely clear that will spell doom for polar bears. Polar bears survived the last time the Arctic melted, and we need to give them credit for being some of nature's ultimate survivors. After all, they thrive in areas where few other large animals can. Only time will tell if polar bears will continue to bless our world. You can help polar bears and other animals in many ways. You can donate to your favorite conservation organization like the WWF for research and conservation projects. You can do simple things like reduce your carbon emissions by turning off lights when you leave the room, switching to green sources of energy like solar and wind, and finding other ways to save energy. You can share this video with your friends to help them learn more and get involved in polar bear conservation. With your help and the polar bear's natural survival skills, there will never be a last polar bear. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to comment and like this video and subscribe to Dr. Coelacanth. For more great content, check out the other videos on my channel. 